Hey everybody, welcome on back to the read-through on programming. Besides explaining JavaScript, I will introduce the basic principles of programming. Programming, it turns out, is hard. The fundamental rules are simple and clear, but programs built on top of these rules tend to become complex enough to introduce their own rules and complexity. You're building your own maze in a way, and you might just get lost in it. There will be times when reading this book feels terribly frustrating, like when you find out that the recordings you made of reading it didn't have any sound. And not all of them either, just like a random smattering of like eight. If you're new to programming, there will be a lot of new material to digest. Much of this material will then be combined in ways that require you to make additional connections. It is up to you to make the necessary effort. When you are struggling to follow the book, do not jump to any conclusions about your own capabilities. You are fine. You just need to keep at it. Take a break, reread some of the material, and make sure you read and understand the example programs and exercises. Learning is hard work, but everything you learn is yours and will make subsequent learning easier. When action grows unprofitable, gather information. When information grows unprofitable, sleep. From Ursula K. L. Gwynn, The Left Hand of Darkness. A program is many things. It is a piece of text typed by a programmer that is the directing force that makes the computer do what it does. It is data in the computer's memory, yet it controls the actions performed on this same memory. Analogies that try to compare programs to objects we are familiar with tend to fall short. A superficially fitting one is that of a machine. Lots of separate parts tend to be involved, and to make the whole thing tick, we have to consider the ways in which these parts interconnect and contribute to the operation of the whole. A computer is a physical machine that acts as a host for these immaterial machines. Computers themselves can only do stupidly straightforward things. The reason they are so useful is because they can do these things at an incredibly high speed. A program can ingeniously combine an enormous number of these simple actions to do very complicated things. A program is a building of thought. It is costless to build, it is weightless, and it grows easily under our typing hands. But without care, a program's size and complexity will grow out of control, confusing even the person who created it. Keeping programs under control is the main problem of programming. When a program works, it is beautiful. The art of programming is the skill of controlling complexity. The great program is subdued, made simple in its complexity. Okay, Some programmers believe that this complexity is best managed by using only a small set of well-understood techniques in their programs. They have composed strict rules, best practices, prescribing the form programs should have and carefully stay within their safe little zone. This is not only boring, it is ineffective. Um, that's one of those statements you're going to want to take with a little bit of a grain of salt. Sometimes when you're getting started, best practices can be an excellent way to not drown in an ocean of possibility. Uh, but he does make an interesting point about not being too attached. Or he or she. I'm not really sure what Marin is. But anyway, new problems often require new solutions. The field of programming is young and still developing rapidly, and it is varied enough to have room for wildly different approaches. There are many terrible mistakes to make in program design, and you should go ahead and make them so you, that you understand them. A sense of what a good program looks like is developed and practiced, not learned from a list of rules. Again, there's kind of a give and take between there, but an excellent point to be sure. So that's it for that subsection. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.